All right, we're in unit number two, uh, working through the concepts. We just did speed, and now we're going to make a transition and work on uh, velocity. And so uh, there is a, a subtle difference, very important though, a subtle difference between speed and velocity. Speed, we said, was just simply distance divided by time. It didn't have any type of direction to it. We measured in meters per second, miles per hour, feet per minute, whatever it is, but that's speed. All right, we're making a transition into velocity, and so I'm going to first give you the, the definition for velocity, and then we'll run through some examples. And I think when we're done with the examples, uh, you'll get a feel, pretty good feel for um, what exactly velocity is. So here's velocity. A quantity that measures how fast, and we've already talked about that. So this piece right here, this is just simply speed. Don't let that, don't let that confuse you. That part there is just speed. But here's the difference. We're going to add something to that concept, and then once we add something to that, it's not speed anymore, it'll become velocity. And here it is, and in which direction an object is moving. So not only is speed, not only is velocity how fast you're traveling, but it's how fast you're traveling in a certain direction. We have an abbreviation for velocity, and that's V with an arrow on top, and so there's our uh, abbreviation for velocity, and it has the arrow. Uh, we need to go to your your uh, unit sheet and actually record velocity on your unit sheet. And so uh, here's velocity. And velocity would be like meters per second east, or you could say meters per second west, or you could say miles per hour down. Anything that is speed, meters per second, miles per hour, and direction, up, down, left, right, you know, anything along, along those runs. Uh, the equation for velocity is displacement divided by time, and we first probably need to define that in our notes first. So we'll get to that and then come back and, and fill that in. All right, so velocity is a vector, and I in your uh, in your notes I kind of underlined v for vector and v for velocity, so you got a better chance of remembering that speed is a scalar, but velocity is a vector. I guess there it is. So speed. Uh, scalar, S, S, and then this V for velocity, V for vector. So that makes it pretty easy. All right, so velocity is a vector quantity because direction is indicated. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about average speed now, or I'm sorry, average velocity, and average velocity is the displacement. Uh, if you go backwards in your, in your head, do you remember speed? Speed wasn't displacement. Speed was distance divided by time. So there's a subtle difference here. So speed was distance divided by time. Velocity is going to be displacement divided by time. Divided by the total time. And so the equation looks like this. And this is what we need to go ahead and put into um, our unit sheet. So it's V with the arrow for velocity. D, displacement with the arrow divided by time. So there it is, V equals D over T. And that's what I tried to put right over here. So velocity equals displacement divided by time. All right, question number seven. Two friends travel two different routes below, uh, both start and stop in the same location at the same time. And we had something similar, a question similar to this earlier in this chapter. And this is the same question. We're just asking about speed now. I'm sorry, velocity instead of speed. So whose speed is greater? So speed is going to be distance divided by time. So let's look at that a little bit. So distance divided by time. All right, so who traveled the further distance? Will B travel the further distance? And what it says here is they did at the same time. So the times are the same for both of them. Well, if the times are the same for both of them, then the one that traveled the further distance is going to have the greater speed. So we'll say B in this case. Next question, whose velocity is greater? And this is where we have to be careful. Velocity is displacement divided by time. And if it's displacement divided by time, then we have to figure out what is the displacement of the first one, A, and what's the displacement of the second one. Now remember, displacement is the distance between the starting point and the ending point. Well, look at what we got here. They're both starting and stopping at the same point. If they both start and stop at the same point, then their displacements are both going to be zero because really they didn't, in terms of displacement, they didn't travel anywhere. Well, if their displacement is zero, that means I got zero divided, zero meters divided by whatever time. 
Well, that will always give me 0 meters per second. So which of they are the, actually the, the same, and they're both 0 meters per second. Now, since there's no, um, since it's 0, you don't need to give a direction to that. All right, that's question number 7. We're going to flip it over and do a couple more questions, and then we'll wrap up this video. So here's instantaneous velocity. We just did velocity, displacement divided by 10. Now we're doing instantaneous. And so here it is. It's a description of how fast and in which direction. So that shouldn't surprise you. An object is moving in a particular instant in time. So the only way we're going to be able to calculate instantaneous velocity is if we make a time interval, kind of what we're doing out on the street, measuring the cars, make our time interval as small as possible. If we make it as small as possible, then our uh, velocity will be uh, an instantaneous velocity instead of an average velocity. And, and there's a kind of a fancy way of showing it, and I'm going to show it right over here. Uh, this is something that's not going to be on the test, but it's a great concept for you to be able to start wrestling with in your head. So here's velocity. And to do velocity, we, we already talked about the fact that we're going to have to take our displacement divided by time. But we want that time to be as short as possible. And to show that, or to signify that, um, those that are in pre-calculus or in calculus will recognize this. We need to make that time approach zero. So uh, velocity, instantaneous velocity, is the limit of as t approaches a zero when you take the displacement and divide it by the time. I'm not too concerned that you'll be able to understand that, but at least you got it now. All right, moving along. Um, demonstration. In class, I would have, I would walk around a room and I would say, okay, I want you to raise your hand when there is a change in speed. So anytime I would change my speed, I, want you to, I would want you to raise my hand. Since I really can't do that on a video here, I'm just going to tell you what we came up with. We would raise your hand um, when we uh, sped up or when we slowed down. So anytime you change your speed, you're either going to be speeding up or you're going to be slowing down. Then we did another one. I said, okay, now I'm, I'm going to move around the room again. And this time I want you to raise your hand when I change my velocity. And when we did that in class, we added, so there's not just two of them, there's three in this case. So we added one more. So they raised their hand when I sped up, when I slowed down. And actually, since since velocity is a vector, also when I turned. So velocity is velocity can be changed by speeding up, by slowing down, and by turning. And for some people, they really have a hard time getting their head around that. But you've you got to be able to get that down. And I'll be hammering that throughout the rest of the year. So anytime you change your velocity, we, 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 you can do that by speeding up, slowing down, or turning. So anytime you speed up, slow down, or turn, we've changed our velocity. We're going to give that a really fancy name here in just a brief moment. Probably the, one of the most important concepts that we'll take a look at this this uh, this particular chapter. So here it is. Uh, uni this is not the important concept. It's in a bit. But here's uniform motion. Uniform motion is motion with a constant velocity. So as long as you don't speed up, as long as you don't slow down, and as long as you don't turn, we call that uniform motion. Uni uniform motion is kind of boring. You're just going down and without speeding up, without slowing down, and without turning. So moving along, there are three ways to change the velocity or uniform motion. So three ways to either change the velocity of an object or three ways to avoid uniform, uniform motion. And here they are. And this is what we just went through. So speed up, slow down, turn. So for this particular video, you got to make sure and know that anytime you change your velocity, you can either speed up, slow down, or turn, or you can go the other way with it. You can say, anytime I change my, anytime I speed up, sped up, slow down, or turn, that gives me a change of velocity, and that's going to springboard us into the next concept in the next video.